looking for a video where you can learn the human respiratory system that do in under 15 minutes? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm your biology educator Aishwarya and I welcome you to the Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel. And in this video, we are going to have a crisp understanding of the structure and function of the human respiratory system. Now, when we talk about the respiratory system, a process that we must be familiar with is the process of cellular respiration. Now, what is cellular respiration? It can be simply defined as the process of breakdown of food within the cell in order to release energy in the form of ATP. And here we can say that we can say that it is the breakdown of glucose in order to release energy. Now, of course, when we talk about cellular respiration, we know that there are two kinds of cellular respiration where we have aerobic respiration and we have anaerobic respiration. Now, in this video, we will focus a little bit more on aerobic respiration. Now, aerobic respiration is a process which takes place in the presence of oxygen and we see that there is complete breakdown of glucose in order to release energy in the form of ATP. And we see that carbon dioxide here is given out as a byproduct. Now, within the cell, we see that there's a cell organelle which is the mitochondria that is actively involved in this particular process. But the real question is, oxygen that is there is a gas which is present in our surroundings. But somehow the gas which is present in our surroundings is made available within the body and that too within the cells of our body such that the mitochondria can utilize it. So that complete breakdown of glucose takes place so that we can get the energy currency of the cell which is nothing but ATP. So how exactly does our body make oxygen available to these cells? That's what we're going to understand in greater detail today. So first and foremost, we see that oxygen that is there, which is a gas in our surroundings, must be brought into the body. And from there, we see that it needs to enter a transporting system so that at the end of the day, it can reach the cells and production of energy can take place. So let's first start with the step of understanding how it is made available within our body. Now we see here that there is a physical process by which we are able to make oxygen enter into the body. And this is what we call as breathing. Now understand that breathing is a process wherein we take in air, right? Or we can say that it is a process by which there is movement of air inside and outside the body. Now I told you that it is a physical process. Now here if you notice, I'm not saying oxygen or I'm not saying carbon dioxide, but I'm saying that it is the process by which air moves in and out of the body. So it means that we breathe in air, right, which is rich in oxygen. And we give out air or we expel out air, which is rich in carbon dioxide. So we see that the process of breathing in air rich in oxygen is what we call as inhalation. And the process of giving out air, which is rich in carbon dioxide, is what we call as exhalation. And once we breathe in, we see that it enters into the important organ system of our body, which is the human respiratory system. Now, on a board examination point of view, what you need to know is the pathway or the passage of air through the human respiratory system. So the chronology in which the organs are placed and how it moves is very, very important for us to understand. So let's go on this journey and understand the different parts of the human respiratory system. Now, when we breathe in, right, how does the air enter through, right? Or which part of the body does the air enter through? Well, it enters through these small openings which are present in our nose, which we call as nostrils. And we see that these nostrils are located as a part of the upper respiratory tract. So the respiratory system is divided into two regions, the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. And the air starts its journey by entering through these small openings called as the nostrils, which are present in our nose. And then they enter into the next part, which is a chamber called as the nasal chamber or we refer it to as the nasal cavity. Now we see that this nasal cavity that is there ensures that it moistens and warms the air and it also filters out any dust particles or unwanted particles that may enter along with the air. Now how exactly does it do that? 
So if we look closely at the inner linings of the nasal cavity, we see that there are various hair-like structures which are present called as cilia and we see that it also has the ability to produce this viscous fluid called as mucus and that is a mucus lining. Now you see that this mucus is like slime. So whatever passes through it, right, big, big particles, it will trap it so that nothing unwanted enters further into the respiratory system. So this step right here is very important that the nose filters out germs and dust particles that enter along with the air that we breathe in. Now once it passes through the nasal chamber, it then proceeds downwards and then it enters into a common opening which is the pharynx. Now we know that the pharynx is a common passageway for both food as well as air. But from here we see that the air takes a different journey and moves into the next part which is the larynx. Now the larynx is often referred to as the voice box or we see that it houses the vocal cords and we are able to speak and communicate our thoughts with the help of our larynx. Now from the larynx we see that it descends down into the next part which is the trachea. Now the trachea is very popularly also known as the windpipe of our body. And here we see that the trachea is protected by C-shaped cartilaginous rings. So if you notice here, we see that there are some incomplete C-shaped cartilaginous rings. Now why does a trachea possess these structures? Simply because it prevents or avoids the collapsing of the tube and keeps it sturdy. But why is it incomplete and C-shaped? Because right behind the trachea or the windpipe, we have our food pipe, which is the esophagus, which is kept just located behind that. Which is why we see that we have incomplete rings and not full rings. Yes? Now from here, we observe that the trachea is now bifurcating into two. It is divided into two like that of a tree, right? If you have a tree and you see the stem branching, I mean the trunk branching out, it will something like that. And it branches out into two forming bronchus. Plural here being bronchi. Now we see that it is an airway, con it is a pathway which conducts air into the primary respiratory organ which is the lungs. Now lungs are spongy structures and we have a pair of lungs. And we see that these lungs are located in the chest cavity of our body and it is protected by the rib cage. Now here we see that it is the primary respiratory organ which plays a very important role in breathing. And apart from that, it houses very important structures called as alveoli. Now where are these alveoli located? Well, let's further go into the journey of the bronchi. Now the bronchi have entered into the lungs, right? Now from here we see that it will further branch out into forming more and more branches called as bronchioles. Now bronchi are, you know, wider in diameter, but as it keeps branching into bronchioles, right, the diameter becomes more narrow and narrow. And eventually they end in air sac-like structures called as alveolar sacs, or the plural that we use is alveoli. But if I were to use it in singular form, we call it as alveolus, right? So this is plural and this is singular. So let's have a look at a single structure. Let's have a look at a single alveolus. Now, as you can see, this right here is a single alveolus. And we see that it is, so if I were to write down the structure, we see that structurally, we see that it looks like an air sac or I would say it has a balloon-like structure right? So we see that it has a balloon-like structure. Now if you look at how thin it is, no? It is actually just thin walled, right? So it is thin walled and it's just made up of a single layer of cells. And we see that it is richly supplied with blood vessels. So this right here is very, very important because it is richly supplied with blood vessels. Now here we know that blood vessels are the transporting unit. So they bring in blood and of course they transport it to different parts of the body. Now here we see that a very important process takes place and that is of gaseous exchange. So when we breathe in, we see that we're breathing in air rich in oxygen. So from our nostrils, through our nasal cavity, to pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, it has reached alveoli. And now at the alveolus, we see that the air that is there is rich in oxygen. So what happens? There is more amount of oxygen or higher concentration of oxygen inside the alveoli, maybe when compared to the blood. 
So we see that the oxygen moves from a region of high concentration to a region of its low concentration. And we know that this movement is what we know as diffusion. So we see that oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the bloodstream. But your blood is not only responsible for transporting oxygen, but we also know that it's responsible for transporting some waste materials. So we know that carbon dioxide, which is given out as a byproduct of respiration, is also transported by the blood. And this carbon dioxide is present more in amount, right, in the bloodstream. So the blood that is there has more amount of carbon dioxide when compared to the air that we breathe in. Which is why we see that the carbon dioxide will diffuse from the blood into the alveoli. And it is not that, you know, they'll say, oh, oxygen, you go first and carbon dioxide, I'll come second. No, it happens simultaneously, which is why we call this process as gaseous exchange. Now, here there are two things to keep in mind. In our body, we don't have one single large alveoli. But rather, we have millions of alveoli, right? We have millions and millions of alveoli within the lungs. What could be the reason of having many alveoli rather than one single large alveoli? The answer is very simple. To increase the surface area for a gaseous exchange to take place so that more amount of oxygen can enter into the blood and can be transported efficiently to different parts of the body. Which is why we have millions of alveoli and not just one single large alveoli. Now the second question is, what is there in the blood that actually helps in transporting this oxygen? Well, we see that the blood has various red blood cells and these red blood cells have this red color because there's a pigment called as hemoglobin. And we see that this hemoglobin that is there, it has high affinity for oxygen and that is how it is able to transport oxygen to different parts of the body. So effectively, if you see gaseous exchanges taking place, your oxygen will reach different parts of the body. Carbon dioxide is now entered into the alveoli, right? So it will go back in reverse order from alveoli through bronchioles and then through bronchi, trachea, your larynx, pharynx, it will reach nasal chamber and come out through nostrils. So effectively, if you see from gaseous exchange, we have understood how production of energy takes place and how the waste product that is carbon dioxide is finally given out. So as you see with under 15 minutes, we've not only learned about the structure of the human respiratory system, we've learned about how exactly gaseous exchange takes place and of course the role of alveoli. So here's a quick homework question for all of you. How are the alveoli designed to maximize exchange of gases? Now, this question right here is very, very important on an examination point of view, which is why I sincerely request all of you to let me know the answer in the comments below and I will definitely be checking them out. Now, if you are a regular subscriber of this channel, then you know what we do on this channel. But if you are a new subscriber, then let me tell you that for all my 10 standard students and for the 9 standard students, we have the ongoing Shikhar series where every day we have classes between 6 p 5, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. And of course, we release some interesting YouTube shots at 5 p.m. So this is the timetable of our channel so that when you hit the subscribe button on this video, you will know what to expect from this channel. And of course, as you know, Baiju's 9th and 10th has always got you covered. So if you enjoy what we do here, do not forget to subscribe because we will help you with your board examination preparation. We will be helping you with your overall conceptual clarity. And we take your preparation, your academics very, very seriously on this channel. And we don't just focus on that. We focus on holistic education as well. So do not forget to hit the like button and share this video with your friends. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments below so that we can make more such short academic concept capsules for all of you. Thank you so much for being a part of this video till the very end. I will see you soon. But up until then, everybody, take care. Lots of love and bye-bye.